Whenever two simple sugar molecules combine to form a disaccharide molecule, this reaction is known as a condensation reaction. And that's because when we form a glycosidic bond between two sugars, a water molecule is released into the environment. Now, the reverse of that, when we break a glycosidic bond between two molecules in a disaccharide to form the individual monosaccharide sugar molecules, we need a water molecule for that breaking to actually take place. So let's provide the reaction mechanism for the condensation and hydrolysis of maltose under acidic conditions. Now maltose is a disaccharide. So we take two D-glucose molecules and we combine them to form a maltose. And this combination is known as condensation reaction. So let's begin by providing the condensation of maltose. So we begin with our beta D glucopyranose, this molecule as shown here. So because we are under acidic conditions, we begin with a hydronium. So we have a hydronium as shown that basically acts as an acid and it protonates this oxygen of our hydroxyl attached to carbon number one. The reason we protonate this oxygen is because only the protonation of this oxygen will lead to a resonant stabilized structure as we'll see in just a moment. So we have these electrons, grab this H, displacing the sigma bond, forming a water molecule. So let's draw our water molecule up here. So this is the water molecule formed here as well as the protonator version of this sugar molecule here. So let's draw it. So we have our, okay. So, okay. So this is, and we have our O that is protonated. We have the H points downward. The H points upward, the H points downward, H points upward, and H points downward. So we have our, this group here, OH here, OH here, and OH here. And we have a positive charge on this oxygen here. So the next step, so let's label this as step number one and let's label it with purple okay so this is step number one the protonation of the hydroxyl group on our anomeric carbon number one so in the next step the second step because this is a good leaving group and this bond is weakened between the carbon and the oxygen as a result of this positive charge this bond basically uh, breaks off because the electronegative oxygen pulls away those electrons in the bond and this is the key step here the key point we form a resonance stabilized intermediate and only the protonation of this hydroxyl leads to this resonance stabilized intermediate because of the proximity of this oxygen to this carbon here so if we protonate this 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 or this hydroxyl it will not lead to this resonance stabilized intermediate that's why those steps those reactions do not take place so let's draw these resonance stabilized structures. Oh. All right, let's just draw these first. So we have this, this, we have this, these, and this. Okay, so we have this, and there will be resonance stabilization. Okay, so let's fill in with our groups H points up, H points down, H points down, H point, actually this H will not point down, it will point here because we have a carbocation. H points down 
here we have our OH, our OH, our alcohol group, we have our OH, and the same thing here, H here, H here, H here, H here, H here, OH here, OH here, and OH here in our alcohol group here. Okay, so when this departs, we of course form our water molecule plus water, and this is why it's called condensation because of this water molecule here. And when it departs, it leaves a positive charge on this carbon, so we have our carbocation intermediate, but we also have resin stabilization. These two electrons can form a pi bond here, and we form this pi bond, and so our two, our charge, the positive charge, is placed onto this oxygen here. So we have the delocalization of charge, and this is a stabilizing effect. Now, this is step number two. What is step number three? So now we have the second sugar molecule, the second glucose molecule, basically approaches and will act as a nucleophile attacking this electrophile, this carbon here. So we can imagine that we have this empty lobe here, and this empty lobe will basically want to interact, because it's an electrophile, will want to interact with a nucleophile. And that nucleophile will be that carbon, that uh, hydroxyl group of the other sugar molecule. So let's draw that sugar molecule. So it's this sugar molecule here. So we basically have our H here, H down, up, down, H up, H down, hydroxyl group here. The question is, which one of these many hydroxyl groups will act as a nucleophile attacking this open carbon here? Well, because we're dealing with the maltose, when we discussed our maltose molecule, we said that the glycosidic bond in maltose is basically an alpha, one, four, glycosidic bond. And that means that we have a bond between the first carbon of sugar uh, one. So this is, <clears throat> so this is uh, the first carbon of sugar number one and the fourth carbon of sugar number two. One, two, three, four. So this is the fourth carbon here. So our nucleophile is our hydroxyl group, this oxygen of the fourth carbon, and it attacks the first carbon from the bottom, so that we form our alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. So this is the important part. It must attack from the bottom to actually form that alpha 1,4 glycosidic bond. So, Let's draw our molecule. So how is it going to look like? So basically it's going to look like um, this. So let's draw our O. Okay. Um, let's draw this slightly this way. Okay. So uh, this is this carbon here. This is carbon number one. And so, we're going to have uh, the up, the down. So this is our oxygen. It will have an H. Um, and this is the carbon here. So let's draw our two electrons here. So this is our attachment here. So this will be, um, look like this. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. So we have this. We have this, this, um, and um, yeah, so let's redraw this. So we have our bond here, we have this, we have this, okay, so it looks something like this, so let's draw our other groups to, so forgot this group here. 
uh, H pointing down, we have our uh, OH pointing here, H pointing down, H pointing up, OH pointing equatorially, OH point equatorially, H point downward. And the same thing here, we have our OH, we have our um, H that points up, this one points equatorially, equatorially, downward, upward, equatorially, and our H here points upward. Okay, and the H here also points downward. Okay, and so notice that this is not the last step because we have a positive charge on this oxygen. Look, here, when this acted as a nuclear file, there's the H atom left over. And so now what happens is the water molecule formed in step one here will act as a Lewis base, deprotonating this oxygen, reforming that acid, the hydronium acid, in the last step. So let's say this is step one, step not three, step two, step three, and this will be our step four. And so basically, this is the final step. In the final step, we have the water molecule that is, let's say, in close proximity to this molecule here, to this region. And so it acts as a nucleophile grabbing this H, deprotonating this bond, uh, deprotonase oxygen. And so we form the final product, which looks exactly like this, minus this uh, H atom here. So let's try to draw it one last time. So we have our uh, here. Okay. Okay. And we have the bond going downward. And now we see that it looks okay. And we could fill in all the groups if we'd like to. So we have our OH pointing this way, H pointing up. Our OH points this way, H points downward, H points up. Remember, the larger groups point equatorially because that is the more stable arrangement. So we have our group here, the H points downward. Here we have the same thing. Primary alcohol, OH, H downward, H up, OH inward, uh, equatorially, I mean OH here. H here and the H points here. Okay, so this is the maltose molecule. Now, this reaction, so one, two, three, and four is the condensation reaction. And this is true for combining any two sugar molecules together to form a disaccharide. Now, what about the hydrolysis? The hydrolysis is the same exact reaction, but going in reverse. So if we follow step four, step three, step two, and step one in reverse, that is the mechanism for hydrolysis. So when we go here, the water becomes the hydronium. So when we go in reverse, the first step is this hydronium protonates this oxygen to form this molecule here. Then in step three, going backwards, this bond breaks off to form a resin-stabilized intermediate and a second molecule, one of our D-glucose molecules. And in this step, a water molecule attacks this nucleophilically, and that's exactly why it's called the hydrolysis, because we need a water molecule to form that final sugar. So once this water attaches, the water is deprotonated, we form the hydronium at the end as well as our beta D glucopyranose molecule. So going this way is condensation, going in reverse is hydrolysis.